welcome in or welcome back. It's a monkey mar. Before we get into today's video, please make sure you click the like, the subscribe, and the bell for notifications. Hey guys, uh, welcome in. I was actually looking to see if there's been any updates that I missed on the cases and stories and people that we follow on this channel so this I haven't even seen it I haven't looked at it but it's Quentin's close-up investigation discoveries Michelle Sigona and it does say that Quentin Washington of Quentin's close-up recently spoke with investigation discoveries Michelle Sigona the season 3 premiere of In Pursuit with John Walsh airing on Wednesday at 10 p.m. and streaming on Discovery will feature a segment on Orin and Orson West from California City, California. Sagona is a digital producer and correspondent. You can see the interview below. Let's go ahead and check out this interview. I am going to do a little bit of a reaction during the interview so that it does not sit in the deck and YouTube lets me publish it with no copyright claims. So with that guys, let's get into it. Thank you so much for having me. I, it's just it's such an honor to be here with you today. I know that you have interviewed so many people over the last decade and so many new makers, not just from your area and across the country, and it's great to be a part of your show. Oh, thank you. I'm so happy to have you here because obviously you are a national correspondent and an Emmy award-winning television journalist. And over your career, you have covered thousands of breaking and historical news stories that we all know of, including September 11th, the DC sniper and murders, the Aurora movie massacre, and of course the Newtown school shooting in Connecticut. And now, okay, hang on, guys. I am going to fast forward this into the part of Orrin and Orson because I do not have the time to listen to this whole entire interview. But I am going to attach Quentin Washington's link down below in the description. I will also tag him and give him a big shout out for the fact that I'm using his video without him knowing. So, let's go ahead and fast forward through this and get to the part about the missing West Boys. Speaking of which, you know, the season three premiere of In Pursuit with John Walsh airs tomorrow night at 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 Central on Investigation Discovery. And of course, now with the streaming on Discovery Plus. And we'll feature a segment on missing Orin and Orson West from California City, California. Apparently, they're a four-year-old and a three-year-old, and they were last seen playing in their backyard in California City, California, on December 21st, 2020, when, according to their adopted parents, they vanished. Orin and Orson are both about three feet tall and weigh about 35 pounds. When exactly were they reported missing? So they were reported missing right before the Christmas holiday. I mean, this is supposed to be a joyous time, a time of the year when these little kids are looking forward to the holidays and, and there's just great energy. And I will tell you that, um, you know, when, when children like this go missing, especially around the holidays, it, it impacts obviously the family and the people who know them, but it impacts the entire community. In this case, the entire nation. I mean, this case has been covered um, throughout the United States of America because we do not know where these children are. And at this point, um, any tip, anything could come forward, you know, according to published reports, investigators have been out at the home where they went missing from. They have searched that residence a number of times. Uh, one of the investigators um, that I was listening to had said, we are 110% sure those children are not inside of that house. They dug up the backyard. And so at some point, they may have likely, possibly, allegedly been taken somewhere or someone took them somewhere. Mm -hmm. So we have to get the word out. We have to keep the word out about this. Although reports have been done, although stories have been done, you know, it's this wave. It's this wave with these cases. And we have to be very aware of that wave because when things are quiet and things are low, we need to bring it back up again. And that's exactly what we are doing with In Pursuit with John Walsh. We are bringing these children back to the forefront. We are putting their faces out there, not just to a national audience, international audience, 
on Discovery Plus. And listen, John Walsh always guarantees this. You can always remain anonymous. You can text the hotline. You can call the hotline Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 p.m. Eastern. There's so much that you can do. You can email tips at teamandpursuit.com. You can submit your tip on the website. There's a variety of ways. And, um, and I will tell you that every single tip is passed on to investigators. And you do not have to leave your name or information. And there's no call tracing. And let me go back to that location, California City, California, Michelle. What type of area is that? It just seems to be a, a neighborhood, a, a safe area. This is a place where, um, you know, there's a lot of background with this story, probably too much for us to even go into in this short conversation. But, um, you know, these children were, were living with their foster family. And, um, and, you know, when they went missing, it just, it really impacted everyone, everyone around them, the whole entire city, the whole area, every neighbor, every friend, anyone who's ever known them. Mm. And when did the adoptive parents actually saw those two kids last? Um, according to, to reports and from what we've learned and from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, they were playing apparently in the backyard. Mm. And at some point they disappeared. Is that particular area known for crimes? A lot of crimes? You know, um, I have not pulled the crime st statistics for that particular area, so I, I may not be the best person to talk about that. Um, but what I will tell you is, is that when they were reported missing, it was taken seriously, that this case has been worked from, from the very start up until now. This is in no way a cold case. This is an active, continuous investigation. I, I hate to ask this, but... Are they possibly allegedly with their biological parents? That's a good question. I, you know, these children at this point really could be anywhere. That's why um, we're hoping that by shining the spotlight on them again and 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 putting it out there that you know, and sometimes I really want to want to talk about this for just a moment is that people may think that oh, well. I think I, maybe I saw one of them at the store. I'm not 100% sure. It was in a place in Idaho. I'm just giving you an example. You never know. If you think that you've seen a missing child or fugitive, call in that tip or text that tip because there could be another piece of information working from that same area and it could, it could go together and kind of uh, you know, create a cluster essentially, of information that could really guide investigators. So you never know how one small little nugget, little piece of information can guide investigators um, to another, down another path. And did the uh, adoptive parents give any kind of description of how, what clothes the kids were wearing that particular day? Um, you know, if I'm not mistaken, they were in jackets. Um, they were outside. They were... Um, you know, they were just playing and, and being kids yeah. and really sort of enjoying enjoying their time. I will tell you that also, according to reports, that the um, the surveillance camera or the video camera at the house was off by an hour. Uh, so really, it was five five I think five twenty six or five thirty p.m. Mm -hmm. uh, when sort of everything happened at that you know at that particular residence or w when that video was pulled. And obviously this happened on December 21st, 2020 in California City, California. How old would the kids be today? Today, um, so the oldest child, he would be five and the youngest would be four. And so, um, you know, they've since had birthdays. There have been other holidays. There's been so much that has been missed in this case. I will tell you, according to reports, there's been more than 40 search warrants executed. Um, at one point, it looks like uh, at least 170 items seized and more than 200 tips received in this case. So we're hoping to bring that tip count way up. Right. Um, and I mean, really hoping for, even if it's just one tip right. that would known in and give investigators what they need to close this case and to find them and to recover them and to bring them home. Yes, absolutely. And I know each week John Walsh leads the viewers that is do unsolved violent crimes that urgently need to be closed where time isn't of an essence in this particular case and harnishing the power of IDs active and engaged audience could bring these criminals to justice. Joining Josh, John Walsh every uh, episode is obviously, as you mentioned, his son Callahan, who leads the operation on the ground, working in tandem with the community and local authorities to search for persons of interest. What's that power of the ID today? 
the, the power, oh my goodness, I tell you, the power between both of them, you know, when you're watching John and Cal and you're watching them work with, with these families in the field and, and, you know, especially Callahan getting to meet them and work with them hand in hand. I mean, Cal, Callahan is really bringing you through these cases um, and if, with a firsthand look and a firsthand experience, it's, it's really powerful. And I think that it's, you know, John Walsh's success rate over all these years and decades really speaks for itself because people trust him. Yes. They want to, or they want to bring him information. And it's, it's really, it's these tipsters that bring it all together. They help to close that circle. It's that missing link. And they just, with their tips, help to bring it together and bring it full circle. And I know in partnership with the National Center for Mission, Missing and Exploited Children, that is, series will also feature two missing children each hour, providing age progression photos and descriptions in the hopes that viewers can provide new leads to their whereabouts. How much has social media influenced those leads? How much? I, what was that? How much does, how much has social media that is influenced those new leads? Um, how much does the media influence them? So, social media. Uh, social media, you know, tremendously, there's a whole new, I, it's not even new. I mean, social media has been around for so long now, but um, considering back when I first started in this mission in 1999, up until this point, we've come a long way with social media. Social media has a humongous influence. I mean, just between the groups and the pages, we have the In Pursuit with John Walsh Facebook page. We have the In Pursuit Missing and Wanted group that you can join, um, you know, on Twitter, on Discovery ID, on Investigation Discovery, on, on, you know, not just through the week, but especially on show night. We're putting out the information um, between our partners with the U.S. Marshals and also the FBI and the local state um, and, you know, other investigative agencies, we can really come together and help spread the word about these cases and people help too. I mean, John Walsh and Callahan Walsh is loyal followers. I mean, they're really helping get the word out there. Absolutely. And obviously, you know, the season premiere will be uh, tomorrow night. What can we expect more from this season? Oh my goodness. This, this season. I really think it is awesome that John Walsh and Missing and Exploited Children in his new series did a show on Orin and Orson West. I just wish that anybody that knew anything would come forward and tell the truth. Who do I think is responsible for these little boys going missing? Trizel and why they are still in hiding, whether protective custody or whatever. I wish that they would release them so that people can bother them, drive them a little crazy. I don't know. I just wish that these West boys would be found. And I believe Jacqueline and Trezell hold the key to that. So, I will stay on touch with the Missing West boys. We are four months out of these little boys being gone for a year. There is not much media. There's not much coming out from Bakersfield, PD, or California City. So, I really hope this case has not gone cold. So, that is it for this video. I will go ahead and look for the discovery link to the actual show and attach it down below in the description and I will have Facebook and Discord running by the end of this week. Alright guys, drop them comments, drop them opinions and with that it is a wrap. I want to thank you all for coming in. Thank you for watching please like or dislike whichever you prefer and subscribe everyone have a good day or a good night wherever you are in the world and stay vigilant i am out